by a leftover from the fifth round due to the refusal of either Luton Town or Watford to be beaten by their neighbours out of doors. Your commentator at Kenilworth Road, remaining strictly impartial, is Tony Gubber. Three and a half hours of football has failed to produce a winner in this marathon fifth round tie. And so for this third meeting in six days, both Luton and Watford have changes to try and break the deadlock that could take them beyond Monday's draw for the semi-finals. Luton start today with young winger Gary Parker at number 11. He's the player whose arrival on the field as substitute on Wednesday sparked Luton's revival and the two goals that forced extra time and today's second replay. And a return could be planned also for the experienced David Moss, named as sub after missing the last seven games. Watford's philosophy has certainly been choice and alternative because they brought 16 players and resisted naming the team until 2.30. With John Barnes included as a surprise centre-forward in place of the injured Jimmy Gilligan and Kenny Jackett in at number 11 to replace the injured Worrell Sterling. Tony Coton is back in goal after recovering from his virus infection. Beneath the hat, inevitably the Watford chairman Elton John, happy to sign autographs for the crowd at Kenilworth Road. Referee Jeff Bray, a factory manager from Hinckley in Leicestershire, starting the match, which is immediately stopped by an offence. Watford, the team in the darker socks, attacking the goal to the left, and no doubt recalling that it was a third-round victory over Luton last season that set them on the road to the Wembley Cup final appearance. Steen trying to get round his marker, and was fouled, so barely 10 or 15 seconds gone, and Watford penalised twice. Brian Steen. A very crowded penalty area for this first serious threat on goal. That looked like handball. Well, a moment of panic for the Watford defence. And did John Barnes handle that? It certainly appeared that he did. Tackled by Donerkey, but then two Watford players in quickly. Barnes, nice footwork. Sealy saved with his legs. Well, again, John Barnes influential as Watford went forward. Lovely footwork to give himself sight of goal and force Sealy to stop it with his leg. took a knock. Turner. <laughs> Certainly been in the wars in this first half, Steve Terry. Blood spattered down the front of his shirt and a nasty looking cut above the eyebrow, which is the very reason that he wears that protective piece of plaster to protect an area that has suffered injuries in the past. Seemed to happen in a recent clash of heads with Mick Harford. My Joby. Well, with Watford's centre half suffering a little, the blood all over his face, Luton forcing an opening. Number 10, my Joby with sight of goal but a shot that didn't really force a classic save from Tony Coton. He just had to keep his eye on it and be sure. As the whistle ends the first 45 minutes, perhaps a relief to both teams. This continuing saga of the fifth round cup day, they can't settle. John Barnes, the only man who looks as though he was likely to on two occasions, but stopped by Les Seeley first by the foot, and then the outstretched arms. And so at half-time here, the scoreline is Luton nil, Watford nil. So Luton start the second half, and still the deadlock remains. Four hours, 15 minutes, now the time that these two teams have played, and their fifth-round FA Cup meeting still unresolved. And neither side would look forward to a third replay, which would be at Vicarage Road on Monday evening.
that, of course, if the score was still level after extra time this afternoon. Now Chilby, Steen, Terry back to his keeper. Jacket's header forward. Hooked away by Breaker. Sporting an injury on the eyebrow. Young Breaker. Steen. Parker. Turner! That's what it needed! The ball was delivered perfectly by the youngster Gary Parker who earned his place today as the result of his performance on Wednesday after coming on as a sub. Inch perfect it was, and Wayne Turner dumped it into the back of Watford's net. So Luton, the home team, go ahead by a goal to nil, and now can they hang on to it to put themselves into the quarter-finals? with a quick reply. See, he took a knock after he caught the ball. Steen, faced by Sinnott. Around the youngster, ball cut out by McClellan. Luton are just a bit quicker to the ball at this stage. Rostrum penalised for what looked like a shoulder challenge with Kajobi. And a little conference in the middle. Now the players peel away. Steen's head out. Dean Donachie and Harford standing in a little trio in the middle and then peeling off as the free kick was taken and Steen glancing that header just wide of the post. Foster's clearance and immediately played back for Blissett. the post and for a moment the crowd caught their breath Blizzard's cross played in short to the near post too close to keeper and post catching the post and for a moment looking to, looking as if it had gone into the net Rostron Blizzard Away by Thomas and Rostron. And Watford must be wondering about the match on Wednesday when they led 2-0 with only 14 minutes left and allowed Luton to come back and equalise, force extra time. And this second replay, which Luton now are winning 1-0 as we move into time added on. Ricky Hill. Barnes. Still in possession, Barnes. Some tired legs. The ball off Breaker. Watford's throw. Barnes. Allowed to turn and put in a cross. Terry. Nobody at the far post. And Terry staying forward because we played a minute. Over the 90. The referee hasn't yet put his whistle into his mouth. 
Allows play to continue, but he does now. And Kenilworth Road celebrates a memorable victory. The solitary goal by Wayne Turner. Winning this second replay. Luton into the sixth round of the FA Cup for the first time since 1973. And Watford, last season's Cup finalists, go out of the competition. And who can deny Luton their moment of celebration? Forcing the second replay, and big enough on the occasion to win it. It's Luton 1, Watford 0.